Hello, it's Tom Donald from the London Contemporary School of Piano, and today I'm going to show you how to practice and how to play chord inversions. The best way for you to practice your chord inversions. And if you like our work at the London Contemporary School of Piano, please head on over to our website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com, and ask for our free resources pack. It is packed with so many useful templates and handouts and bits of information based on a lot of the videos you might have seen on our YouTube channel uh, that will really help your practice. And if you're really serious about your uh, piano journey, um, also inquire about enrolling to our Complete Musician course, our Complete Musician Piano Essentials course. Okay, so let's move on over to our inversions now. And uh, this often is a real source of difficulty and confusion for so many people learning piano. So for so many of you, you probably understand the concept of an inversion. You understand that this is a C major as a root chord, and this is a C major in first inversion, and this is a C major in second inversion. And for many of you, you probably are able to do this with many of your chords. So I'm just doing this in D major now, and now I'm doing this on an E flat major. Or an F major. But where we run into difficulties with our inversion playing is integrating it into a piece of music. Being able to look at a lead sheet, a collection of chords, and effectively use inversions and voicings. So today I'm going to break it down and make it simple for you to understand. But not only I'm going to make it simple for you to understand, I'm actually going to do something far more important than that. You see, the problem with music theory is you can study theory all day. We can talk about root chords, first inversion, second inversion, for all day. And yet our fingers might still not know how to do it. Essentially, playing the piano is a physical activity. It is an activity where we use our body, where we use our hands, where we use our fingers and our arms. And this is something we have to train into our muscle memory. So today I'm going to show you how to train inversions into your muscle memory. And that's what's going to be so powerful about this exercise. So let's begin. Here we have a lead sheet. And before I talk about my little arrows and mock-ups I've done on this lead sheet, let me talk a little bit about a simple principle that we can apply to our piano playing. So if you have two chords, here's a really interesting relationship. If you, let's say, have a C major chord and then it moves to an F major chord, you'll notice those two chords are a perfect fourth interval apart, a C to an F. Same thing if I were playing a D minor to a G or an E minor to an A minor. All of those chords are a perfect fourth apart. So here's something you can bear in mind. If you ever come across two chords, like a C major to an F major, or a D minor to a G major, you literally only have to lift the top two notes and you have visited the chord that is a perfect fourth apart. So that's a C major to an F major. And this is something we can immediately train our fingers to do. C major to F major. And I might keep my bass note on the C and the F. That's fine, that, that tells us what the chord is. But as I practice these chords in the right hand, I now have a simple template for finding chords that are a fourth apart. The first chord's a root chord, and the second one is an inversion. In this case, it's in the second inversion, but we don't really think of it that way. We think of it as C major, now I lift the top two notes, and I land on an F major. So this relationship can be applied all across the keyboard. What about a D minor to a G major? There you go, I've done the same thing. I've lifted the top two notes and I'm on my G major. Now I've got an E minor to an A minor and I've done the same thing. I've lifted the top two notes. And of course, irrespective of whether the chord is major or minor, this formula will always work. The only thing is you have to make sure you know the notes of your chord. So this is a D major to a G major. 
And again, the same principle applied. I just lifted the top two notes. So if the chord is a perfect fourth apart, all I have to do is lift the top two notes. So here's a progression which explores that. C major to F major, D minor to G major, E minor to A minor, and then something else happens at the end, which we'll talk about. So let's play through this progression together. C major, F major, D minor, G major, E minor, A minor, F major, C major. So notice I did something different here at the end. That F major to C major has a different relationship. It's going a fourth down. So here's the F major, here's the C major. So this is another relationship with our chords. And that relationship is if the chords are going down a fourth interval, let's say F major to C major or G major to D minor or A minor to E minor, all I have to do in this case is the opposite. Drop the bottom two notes, F major, C major. And that's what explains those last two chords in this progression here, the F major, and I drop the bottom two notes and I'm on the C major. So this is what I call finger language. Lift the top two notes, drop the bottom two notes, it's language our fingers can recognize because it's a physical instruction that we're giving our fingers. If I were to say to you, root position C major, going to a second inversion F major, that means absolutely nothing to our fingers, won't help your fingers at all, and it will just take you forever to find the inversion. And that's the problem that most of you are probably having right now. And I've even mocked it up just by putting these little arrows. I mean, it's just shorthand, but it just gives me an idea of how to plan my inversions. And it's really important when you're doing this for the first time, don't try and overuse the inversions. I'm starting as a root chord, inversion, root chord, inversion, root chord, inversion, root chord, inversion. That's just such a helpful way to do it. So let's look at this next progression now. So we now have, we're now exploring chords that are a perfect fourth down, or you could say a perfect fifth up. But for the sake of the exercise, this C major to G major is a perfect fourth going down, just like the A minor to the E minor is a perfect fourth going down. F major to C major, again, a perfect fourth going down. So when a perfect fourth is going down with the chord change, we can just simply drop the bottom two notes. So let's do that. We have two root chords in a row just because the chords are right next to each other. Let's do that again. By the way, can you guess this piece of music? What is this chord progression? Have you heard it somewhere before? If you have, put it in the chat. Let me know what it is. So that's a really good start to inversions. By the way, it's not the only inversions I could have used for this but it's a good starting point to training our fingers to more intuitively find inversions. Now, if you're looking at a lead sheet and ever getting overwhelmed by the amount of inversions that you might need to use and how to plan it, I'll give you a very powerful suggestion. And that's think in groups of two. You see, if I've got a C major to a G major, I can just plan that by going, okay, root chord, and where's my inversion? Okay, well, I just need to drop the bottom two notes because it's a fourth going down. So just by looking for those patterns, I can decide my chords in groups of two. And then that just makes the whole exercise so much more approachable and accessible. And actually, this is something our fingers can understand. And what starts to happen, especially if you practice exercises like this, your fingers start to memorize the positions and it starts to happen automatically when you look at lead sheets. And that's what you're aiming to achieve with this. So here's another progression and another pattern. Let's say we have a C major to an A minor. 
So that's going down a third interval, literally going down two steps. C major, A minor, E minor, C major. That's going down two steps as well. F major, D minor. That's going down two steps. G major, E minor. That's two steps as well. A minor, F major. So when we see this going down two steps, there's just one simple thing we can do. We just have to literally lift the top note. And we have found a really lovely path to that A minor from the C major. And the same applies from the E minor to the C major. And it's such a beautiful voicing. And I haven't even had the chance to talk about how the smoothness of inversions make our chords sound so much more sophisticated. I like to think of inversions as a choir. You know, you imagine you've got three singers going. Oh. Now, if we told all those singers to just go down two steps oh, to the A minor, something would be a little predictable about that or a little obvious about that sort of chord change. But if we ask those two lower singers to stay on the same note, and we just lift the top note with the top singers going up, we get a really lovely, elegant change. And you can hear a choir or string players in an orchestra doing this. Composers are doing this all the time in their arrangements. You see, by learning to play in versions, you're actually learning a deeper skill. And it is the skill and the art of arrangement, the arrangement of your chords. So let's play through this progression then. C major, A minor, E minor, C major, F major, D minor, G major, E minor, A minor, major G major and we lift the top two notes and we're on C major so finally let's try this in a few different keys and scales we don't just have to practice this in C major after all this these techniques apply to any key universally across the keyboard so let's say I'm going from an E flat major to an A-flat major, it would look like this. Or what about an E-flat major to a B-flat major? It would look like this, I'm dropping the bottom two notes. And what about an E-flat major to a C minor? I would just lift the top note only. can do this in other keys. What about D major? A D major to a G major. I would just lift the top two notes. And what about a D major to an A major? I would just drop the bottom two notes. And what about a D major to a B minor? would just lift the top note. Regardless of what key you're practicing this in, the most important thing you need to know first are the notes of your chord, so you're finding the notes accurately, and then just explore that relationship of chords in groups of two. And once you train this into your fingers, playing inversions will start to become more intuitive. I hope you found today's tutorial an eye-opener for playing inversions. And again, if you'd like to take um, advantage of our free resources, head on over to our website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com. But if you are a little bit extra serious now, this year about making some big strides in your piano journey, I have curated a course 
It's accumulation of my 15 to 20 years of research and development in the field of specialist piano education. And I have managed to synthesize that into eight truly powerful modules. And this is my complete musician piano essentials course. It doesn't matter what level you're up to, whether you're a beginner, whether you're a restarter for piano, you, you stopped for many years and you're starting again, whether you're a hobbyist, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a professional, I can guarantee you these eight modules that I've put together, I think synthesize some of the most key elements to becoming freer at the piano and having a more closer musical relationship with playing the piano and taking away the tension and just freeing yourself up and becoming a complete musician. So if you'd like to go on that journey with me, find out more information about our enrollment and you can email us or get in touch with us again through our website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com. I hope you found our inversions video useful. Uh, start pulling out some sheet music and some scores. Try it with some triads. Let us know in the comments below if you've got any questions about fingering or anything. And I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.